Hello, welcome to part two. Since the last time we were working on this thing and one of my scarf joints on the other side popped, so I took a 3 8 uh, piece of pine and I laminated the whole inside of this one just to be safe. And then on the other side, I went ahead and uh, ripped me a 1 by 2 out of a 14 foot 2 by 4 so I didn't have a scarf joint. But just to make everything even, I went ahead and put my 3 8 laminate on the inside of that. And then I got my all the clamps off the top of the deck and I just got to trim that edge. That'll be the next thing. Okay, we got the bottom of the boat on there. Like I say, I left it a little long. I rough cut it with my, uh, I bought one of these Japanese hand saws and it's real thin curve, razor sharp, and it cuts on the back pole. Really a slick little saw that uh, I didn't want to buy in the first place, but I wish I'd have bought it years ago. And then uh, once you do your rough cut, you just hit this edge with a little plane. I just got a little cobalt plane. That's about the first uh, thing that's worked great on is uh, the end grain. So we got this all on and getting ready to start on my side panels. Okay, as you well know, when you're cutting these boards, they're going to have a little bit of a radius to it, I'm assuming. So I got blocks on the bottom to get my board, I don't know, about a half inch or so of excess on the top. And then I'm just going to give myself a pencil line on the bottom and then uh, so I kind of know better where I'm cutting instead of uh, cutting a straight strip and chancing it, not fitting because of the radius. You don't have a big radius, but if you look at the front to the back of the boat, it's probably a two inches high in the middle of the bottom. So, wish me luck. Okay, I made my marks. It ends up being about 13 and three quarter on the, the stem end and about 13 and a quarter on that end. So I'm just gonna, the next one, I'm just gonna cut me a 15 inch strip and then uh, be done with it. This way I don't have to hold the board up on the side of the boat. Kind of drew the stem so I can, you know, jigsaw it a half inch or so long and then uh, start tacking it in place. Okay, I changed my mind. After I cut the piece 15 inches, I put it up there, I remarked it, I cut it like within a 16th, but uh, I had to switch my jigsaw blade. I had a 10 or a 12 uh, tooth per inch on there. I had to switch to a 20 because uh, this Luan really uh, splintered up, but the 20 is like beautiful. So the reason I did this too, I left 3 sixteenths of an inch on the front where it's meeting the stem. I'm going to take my plane and put a bevel on there so that when the two pieces come together they'll bevel into a, to a nice uh, point. It can be a, somewhere nice to glue. Okay, I got the first piece just clamped in place. As you can see, I left about a quarter inch sticking out and I put a nice taper on there so when I get the second side and the nose, it is uh, going to match up to this one, but I'm going to leave this one, do the other one, and get them matched up on the point before uh, before I glue this one. Okay, got the other piece done. Got the fronts both uh, tapered. Everything perfect. Stuff's so much more enjoyable when it all works out. So now we can uh, pop these off, get them glued, and get them clamped in place. The only thing I'm wondering about is uh, how I want to get clamps up on the top here so I might go ahead and clamp the bottom and then uh, either put a nail or a screw every so often on the top just try to keep it tight and keep no gaps and then just like the other thing we'll take the uh, the uh, plane, plane off this last little bit. I tried to keep it as close as I could but you don't want to get stupid because then you uh, end up short and then it, that's no good either. Okay I got the other two pieces on this end done. They're a little trickier too because you got to make sure you keep this end tight and square and I do both pieces like I said before so I can uh, taper the very tip so that when you go to put them together you get a nice tight uh, joint. So now that I got them both done, I can uh, go ahead and glue. And I've been using a trim nail gun because the 5 8 nails seem to hold it fine. Because it's impossible. I never figured out how to uh, clamp up here short of making some blocks, special blocks and having long bar clamps. Um, I found that if I just keep it tight, use the trim gun as I'm gluing, it uh, 
turned out fine as you can see on this other side. I've not trimmed the edges off but uh, there's no no seam or nothing it's real tight. Okay I got all the side panels on, the bottoms on, fronts are glued to the stems. I trimmed all the excess off the bottom with the plane. Got all the corners sanded nice. So now we're gonna flip it over and see what it looks like. Okay, just got it off the strong back, flipped it over, kind of checking out the way everything lined up and how it looks now that I got it flipped over. Some of the stuff didn't meet up the greatest. The the shear clamps, it's touching on the back side where I glued, but uh all these spots where there's a little gap. I didn't want to tweak the wood. So I'm going to make a, take the epoxy resin and mix it up with some uh, like some sawdust flour and make like a thick paste that I'm going to fill in all the gaps. And then you can see like down in the, the front by the keelson and stuff, I'm going to fill in all them gaps. A little bit on the side. Taking uh, take my plane, get all the excess off of here, get this all cleaned up, and then I can flip it back over and fiberglass the bottom. My table saw has got a bag underneath it that catches all the sawdust. To make these fillets with the epoxy to fill all my, my big cracks, like in the side in here, not really cracks, just gaps, I want to fill all of them fill the material, and then you're supposed to do all your seams where everything meets on the sides and the edges. Um, so what I did, is I took this uh, two liter bottle, I cut a piece of, I got a piece of stainless screen, I epoxied it in the bottom so I'm gonna scoop up the sawdust and then shake it in here to get all the fine stuff and that's how I'm gonna make my. Okay, this works really well. I fill that little container I made with the screen. Screen's in the bottom, about halfway up with the sawdust and it makes this real fine powdery stuff which I'm sure that's what they're calling flour. I think you can buy it but nowhere around here I can buy it. And then this is what it screens out all the big flaky stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do. Fill it about half full so you can shake it real good. It's like a giant salt, salt shaker. Shake it into another container and then uh, that's what we'll mix your uh, fiberglass epoxy with to fill in all your big uh, cracks and fillets. Okay, I got my two deck beams on here. Put a little screw in epoxy them in. I've been doing my uh, gap filling as you can see down the sides. I kind of do it with them nitrile gloves and uh, it's hard to get it in there with a knife or whatever. You mix that uh, epoxy up with the sawdust flour to where it's about peanut butter thickness and I've been filling all my big gaps. They call it fill material. And then uh, I'm going to fill the two bulkheads ends with a piece of plywood. I'm going to fill in this hole on each end so I can start my airtight bulkheads. Um, I got all my joints where the plywood are. I put my two joints, epoxied them in there. Epoxied the two side ones. And that's all I've been doing. And then with putting it in with the gloves, kind of smearing that stuff down the sides, you get a bunch of little boogers. So I let that fiberglass epoxy sit up for, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes till it's pretty stiff. And I take my big one inch uh, chisel and just kind of go along and take all the big clinkers off. It'll just help with sanding later. Okay, I got two coats of uh, the epoxy on the inside. I didn't put any fiberglass uh, mat, but uh, I was pretty adamant about trying to get around all the edges for the uh, my seal for my bulkheads. So I doubled and tripled it and just kind of looked for gaps and even when I had it flipped over I got underneath there so I could do this other edge and then whenever the edge is on top you know it's able to seep down in there a little better. So after a couple times you can see, I don't know if you can see on the video but it's got a real good nice uh, layer in my crack. So uh, this thing hopefully will be really airtight and it won't sink if we ever flip over. Okay, before I fiberglass the bottom, I figured I would, uh, I was going to try a little wood burning since this is a welding shop and I just started my wood shop here. Um, the circly one is uh, great off a little mini fan. The little dash lines is actually a drill bit I welded a rod to. And then the other ones are just various shapes, lines, triangles, squares, circles. So I went ahead and did me a little pattern down the side 
on both sides. And I left it to where, uh, once I put the little strip of wood on the outside, after I put the top on, um, it'll be a half inch down. I'm hoping it comes through the, the fiberglass, just like everything else, you can see the wood grain, so I figured you'd be able to see this. Give it a little accent, because I didn't really want to paint it, but makes it unique. Okay, I flipped it back over before I uh, fiberglass. I wanted to get it on video before uh, I fiberglassed it to see how well it shows up. The, uh, the heat caused a little bit of smoky damage on the outside, but I just hit it with the sandpaper, left it kind of, uh, you know, kind of smoky, because it is wood burning, um, but it's going to look fine once I get the uh, fiberglass and stuff on there.